What's going on guys, King Strats here back in the video on the channel and today we made, look I was in the kitchen, are my are these even? Because everybody likes to talk about my uneven strings, bro, I'll be working, I'll be trying to do stuff, but I made some chopped cheeses, kind of chopped cheeses, I don't even know what to really call these, but let me take you through the process real quick, it was like a 10 minute thing, but I added some onions to a cast iron skillet and I let those sweat down for about 5 minutes, then I added my beef to the top and let that cook off, once that was almost done, I added some pepper jack. I did pepper jack cheese, a little bit different. And then once that melted down, I had my little like burger press, but I used it just to chop the cheese up and like kind of get it melty, melty. Added that to some Martin's potato rolls, the only potato roll you can ever use because it is the best one. After that, I just added some mayo and I used mambo sauce instead of ketchup because, you know, I just used way too much of it. At the end, I decided to freestyle. So I added a fried egg on two of them. And then there you have it. The Martin's rolls are toasted, by the way. I know some people might, I didn't, I didn't show the whole process because I was like moving all over the place. And I had these Checkers fries. I'm a huge fan of their regular fries. And I saw these in like Dollar General. I was like, okay, I've had them in my fridge for like a month. But I finally got around to them, made those in the oven. It's 400 degrees for like 20 minutes and out comes these. They're thinner than the regular Checkers fries, which is like kind of strange, but I'm not really mad at that. Also, no, that's it. Oh, I found these in 7-Eleven. That's right. So I got these in 7-Eleven too. They are Chester's fries, which I love the hot fries. They had a ranch version. Never had the ranch, so I decided to try that bad boy out today. And one more thing before I start, because I know I'm just talking way too much. People were asking about this. Some of y'all knew what it was, but this is Clear American. Uh, it's like a cherry limeade. These things hit. They're at Walmart for usually like $4 for a 12-pack, but I love these. I didn't mention it last time, so that is my bad. Sometimes you mess up, but here we go right here. This is what it looks like, look. A little chopped cheese kind of action. It's not really chopped cheese, but it kind of is. <laughs> All right, can we eat now? Drop a thumbs up, man. You guys already know the vibes. Let's get into this video. Y'all want some of this? All right, I hope this is good, man, because it took too long. If you don't like yolk, look away. I actually just turned my camera off, <laughs> and I took a bite. I'm not going to lie to you. That's why you're going to see a little funny jump cut, but it's all good. Let me get another one here. You just hit, though. Let's try these checkered sweet potato fries. They have the same seasoning that you get on the regular checkered fries. I can see it all over it. I knew I wouldn't like them as much as checkers fries. I'm not going to sit here and lie. I do like them, but I prefer regular fries. The regular checkers fries you get in a bag, if y'all don't buy those already, just go to the frozen food section. They should be there. I found mine in Dollar General. Those are better. These, for a sweet potato fry, are good, though. I'll give them a six and a half out of ten. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real. These is hitting. But it's not my best work. But it's good work. Judging by my own scale of cooking my own stuff, I'll give them a seven and a half. Yes, and a half. I would eat this again, but I would change something a little different, which is maybe what I put on top. Like, originally I was thinking of doing like a kimchi, like a Korean version, with like some bulgogi or something like that, because I had the Trader Joe's, but I forgot I ate it when I reviewed it. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't here. You know what I mean? Let me be honest with you. Oh, that's a crazy yolk. I'm sorry you don't like that. And again, we're going to clear American this. These are so good, bro. I'm telling you. Walmart, gotta find those. Before I chop it up with y'all, let me get this out the way. Chester's Ranch Fries, I like their hot fries, but I've never seen a ranch. I found these in 7-Eleven. The ranch smell is heavy. It smells like the Hidden Valley, like the ranch seasoning that you get. Yeah, I miss my mouth. I ain't gonna lie. Honestly, these are better than I thought that'd be. I had the Takis of these, and I didn't like them at all. These, it just tastes like the regular ones with that Hidden Valley on here. I'm going to keep some of these. I think they would hit if you were like a sandwich or something like that. They would hit. Again, I wouldn't pick these first because like too much of ranch of something. 
would be just overkill. But I like these more than I thought I would. I'll give them a 7 out of 10. Couple things. Gotta talk to y'all. First one. This is more, again, informative. Because a lot of people be, like, commenting stuff. And I want y'all to know, like, I'm... I'm I be on, you know, I be thinking like y'all sometimes. So when I do the car videos, my first car that I have, not this one, I got an SUV now. I mean, people have kind of noticed that. You can tell by the amount of seats. Um, a lot of y'all are talking about my window tints. So I got to tint my windows. My first car, when I was originally doing it, it didn't have windows tints. This one does. <laughs> Some people, I don't know how y'all window tints work, but mine... I can see out better than you can see in the car. So when I'm filming from inside the car, it doesn't look like it's tinted. But I have a picture of the window of my car. This is what it looks like. You can kind of see a silhouette. I don't have illegal tints because I'm not trying to get pulled over like that. But they're tinted enough that you can't just look in my car and see what's going on. I'm not that crazy. I just want some of y'all to know. Some of y'all like, hey, I'm just looking out for you. Like, you're not really looking out for you, but... They're tinted. The car came with tinted windows. Most SUVs come with tinted windows, by the way. But my fronts are even tinted. Not the windshield, but when you buy an SUV nine times out of ten, the back windows are tinted all the way around. And then the front ones aren't. But mine, there are tints in the front, too. They're just, it's not like 5% tint, but you can't just see in my car. That's why yesterday, them people, by the time they realized somebody was in the car... They kind of did a double take. Y'all couldn't see it. But. They might have been able to see a silhouette. But they couldn't just see a dude eating chicken wings. I'm not that crazy. I just want y'all to know. So there's a lot of people that was like. Over the last like week man. You got tension. Went there tinted. I be moving bro. I'm not an idiot. Alright. I just did a video in Patterson. <laughs> I wouldn't just be sitting in Patterson fish bowling. With a camera up. Not crazy. It's all love. I know people don't mean no harm by it. I'm just telling y'all. The windows are tinted. I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. But let me ask y'all this. How do you feel about the big news today that supposedly, well not supposedly, this is what happened. The Senate voted in favor of it's not direct, but more or less, people are calling it the TikTok ban. You know, it's an actual act that prohibits, like, entities from other countries, businesses, from collecting data, etc., which they're accusing TikTok over. Uh, but I see... Some people are like, you know, good. I don't like it anyway. And some people are obviously upset by it. Now, as a creator, I obviously have a vested interest in this. Considering, like, one of my revenue streams is TikTok. Um, but that in and into itself. I understand that most people say, I don't feel bad for those type of people. I have to find a real job. People that think this isn't a real job, I, I don't want to argue about that. That's your prerogative. I understand where you're coming from because, you know, I've talked about how easy the job is in one sense, but also how draining it is mentally. But that's another thing over there. Not everybody that makes additional revenue on TikTok is a content creator, does it for a living. Some people do it as supplemental income. And given the cost of things these days, there are people who... Just make, want to make a little extra money making posts and things like that where they're just posting random stuff. But you still, I don't know if people know how it works, but the creator fund and what now is the creativity program, it gives you money, pays you just like YouTube does. But obviously in a different sense, the, the revenue per, I don't want to go into all the technical stuff, but the money you get for ad revenue on YouTube is significantly higher with longer videos, um, with like your AdSense as opposed to what's on TikTok with the creativity program. But there are people making good money on there, again, that don't do it for a living. They're just doing it. Maybe they're a car salesman or there's some people that just post themselves, you know, doing a little funny dances or whatever, you know, 
and it gives them extra money as opposed to some of my like teacher friends I have that work jobs as bartenders, for example, to supplement the income that they make as a teacher because these days being a teacher in, in a lot of places, New Jersey especially, it's not enough money, man. Like the cost of living, the cost of goods, the cost of car payments, insurance, et cetera, have gone up so high that that helps them offset that cost. So, in that sense, yeah, obviously that part sucks. Forget the creators. I know people, everybody thinks that you have a million followers, you're a millionaire. Not fault, not true, but there's also that side of it. Um, but the other side that I personally don't, but this is like my beef, one, I just feel like it sets a bad precedent. Like, I know the reasons that they're giving, but more or less they don't like it and they just don't want it. So they're just trying to get rid of it. That's what it looks like from the outside to a lot of people. And a lot of people don't believe in control coming from that. Because obviously freedom of speech, etc. Which I do want to stand. Given all of the manpower this takes... Congress just voted, Senate has to vote, and obviously it goes to the president's desk and he can sign off on it. I just feel like maybe they got bigger things to worry about. I don't really think this is like the urgent thing that they're trying to push this through and fast-tracking things left and right. And that's kind of the issue I have with it. There's so many things that need to be fixed, not just abroad, but here as well, that I think they could use their resources to do instead of worrying about an app on a phone. Mainly, which is what I just brought up, it costs way too much money for people to, and I'm not talking about assistance, I'm talking about people who are gainfully employed, people who work 40 hours a week, who do all kinds of different jobs, whether that's manual, customer service, service jobs, you know, you get the idea that depending on where you live, it's getting to the point where people can't afford to pay their bills. People are defaulting left and right on car loans. People are, the credit, like nationally, average score has dipped significantly because, and I don't really think it's just because people want to be delinquents. It's because people generally can't pay. And I feel like maybe we could do something about that or work on it, or something. Now, I'm not a politician. I don't like talking politics. This isn't politics specifically. I'm talking specifically towards the app. And, and I just think that it, it reminds me personally. I remember when Congress had this big hearing about uh, steroids in baseball. Barry Bonds, uh, the Balco thing, the Mitchell report. If you're not familiar with that, that was just a report that it sort of released names of people who in baseball who were steroid users. And there were certain people that were just pushing to, we need to get this out of our sport. Like, why don't you let Major League Baseball worry about that? And then y'all can worry about the people. Because did, did anybody... I, I didn't care about who was using. And, and if they, baseball did, then they could have done something about it. But to, to involve that kind of manpower in order to do that, make it a statement where you got Rafael Palmero and Mark McGuire and other accused and caught some users of them sitting there with the hearings. with Like, could we have a hearing for something else? That's just how I feel. And again, I am not trying, if you want to spam my comments or pepper my comments with politics related stuff, I am not going to entertain it. I don't like to discuss those types of things. I'm specifically relating to one thing. And I've never talked about this directly, but I do not want my page to become that sort of discussion. There's a lot of problems in the world. We're all well aware of most of them. There are plenty of creators who dedicate their resources and men, man hours or woman hours and, 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 and platforms to that. That's where it belongs. For me, this should be a platform where people don't want to go towards that stuff. Like, we're just trying to chill out. That's always been my thing in the page. And I know people at times will, you know, discuss, like, in, in my comments, they'll ask me what religion or pol political. I, I don't want to talk about that. Not because it, I'm hiding anything. I don't want anybody to think that. I just, again, that's not what this page is for. I want you to understand that. 
If I ever decide to talk about those kinds of things, it will not be on this page. It would be on a separate entity. Just like I don't want to turn this into, if you think I'm just going old, because I know some, I, I've read too many comment sections in my life to not understand what people are going to say before they even say it. If you're going to say that, oh, well, why, you know, you should be able to discuss. I don't even like to make my page about sports and I talk about them all the time. And if you've been here long enough, you know that when I start talking about sports too much, I'll be like, I don't want to just talk about that. Or when it's turned into dating, I don't just want to talk about that. I like to have general surface level discussions that aren't as divisive. I'm not trying to divide people not here. That can be somewhere else and I'm cool with that. Again, I've spoken to some of y'all in the comment section about that. I just don't discuss that kind of stuff. And I hope y'all can respect that. Because I know these are those are certain things that people are really passionate about. But... I want this, the reason I started this, the reason I've always believed in food is because I think it's a great equalizer that people of all walks of life, we all love food, we all love different cuisines, we can learn about each other's cultures, and I'm not trying to heal the world over here, but at the same time, we all have a lot of similarities, and food is that great equalizer. Most families that I know, from whatever walk of life, you have large families, and a lot of y'all get together, or whether it's holidays, or some people every Sunday, and we have large meals, we break bread, and different kinds of culture, and I've always loved that. And it doesn't matter what walk of life you are, um, I'm willing to sit down and eat with anybody, as long as they are friendly. Because that's what this is always about. And in 2024, with the advent of all these different social media avenues, there's a lot of divisiveness that's more in the open. I think it's always existed, but it's more in the open now because people, everybody has a platform to a certain extent. I don't want that to be everywhere. You know what I'm saying? This is a food channel, first and foremost. This isn't a music channel, this isn't a, but we can touch on things, but I don't want, so I want people to understand that and hopefully I'll respect it. I know some people don't care, but I've always said this. I don't care what walk of life you're from. Or what your beliefs are. I am willing to have a conversation. As long as it is respectful. With anybody. Because that's the way you learn to understand other people. And I just think personally. There's so much divisiveness in the world. And people want to blame other people for it. You know whatever party or whatever it is. It's, it's always their fault not yours and so on. That we forget that we're all humans. Like we're all people. And I don't know. Is it going to take like an alien invasion for us to understand that? And that, that's the part that, like, is upsetting to me. We forget that. We can't have civil discussions anymore without people trading insults and personal attacks and public. We can't have, like, just a regular civil adult. Some of y'all ain't adults, but still, y'all are young adults. Adult discussions. Like, we need to get back to that. And I think if we did, we would realize that most of us were a lot alike. We just don't understand other people because we've never been exposed to it. You know, and one of the things I saw on TikTok right now was there's this trend um, with like a lot of uh, users that are like that are black and they're talking about, you know, ghetto and they don't like ghetto people and, and, and stuff like that. And I'm just going to tell you this. I grew up and I know people again, I know people may not realize this because the way I carry myself that you think that I've never been in that or lived in that, I have. Um, I did move to the suburbs when I got older. So I've lived in places that are not a lot of money. And I've also lived in places where there's some money. Um, you know, like I never lived upper class. But when I moved and I got to high school eventually, I got to live or, or integrate as an athlete with people who were upper class. And... Even though people don't realize this, what you see on television, whether that's rich people or poor people, the overwhelming majority of people in all those environments that I lived in or was exposed to were just trying to just live, just, just get by. People think everybody in the hood, for example, is like robbing people. And, you know, it's not like that. The, the overwhelming majority of people is either just trying to get by we're trying to get out because they want to live better but 
most people there they go to school they, they they got houses they got it's not what you think where people just walking around and i saw a lot of comments in my own video whenever i talk about going to patterson or stuff like that like that's not the whole city and it's really not like that there are some places yeah but it's not like every place you go is like like the wild west it's not it's really not and i just i don't like that narrative not everybody's like that and i don't think that everybody in the hood like just because you are black doesn't mean you are our, our hood you know what i'm saying like it, it never meant that you know black people just like everybody else there's white people in the hood there's spanish people in the hood there's there's uh, asian people in the hood and, and i think that sometimes people get it confused and they think that just because you know you don't act a certain way that we ain't all alike you know what i'm saying like it's, it's the furthest thing from the truth. And even in the middle class places, there were kids that stole shit. Excuse me for cursing. I witnessed a lot of my friends when they were younger get in trouble for doing stupid stuff like that. You know, a lot of them was getting into trouble doing all kinds of... I'm not trying to... But they, they be doing the same stuff. And when I went to upper class neighborhoods, <laughs> the thing that I would tell you that I couldn't believe, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, I am not joking when I say this. I, I swear to you on everything. I saw more drugs in upper class places than I did in the hood. I swear to you. What people don't realize is people with a lot of money do drugs too. <laughs> people with a lot of money be taking stuff too. Some people do it just for fun. But you'd be surprised. It's not what people think when it comes to this kind of stuff. So if we sat down and had conversations with people from all walks of life, I guess I've been fortunate enough to to live in different places and talk to people from everywhere and, and you know the internet that I, I've started to realize that as I got older. So I just kind of wanted to share that, you know, I don't know sometimes people see people that aren't like them or believe in different things in them and they think that that person may not be good or whatever. There are good people and there are terrible people everywhere. Every, every race, every religion, every whatever, that, that's not the reason. It never has been and it never will be. So I just wanted to say that before I get out of here. I, I don't want to create division here. I, I just want that to be said once and for all. But that's going to be it for me, man. Anybody want to chop cheese? I got you. We'll be back tomorrow. More content, man. The hand signs. They made it to YouTube.